Hello, welcome to Only the Parts You Need, a GURPS podcast. I'm Andrej Ekplant, and in this episode I would like to talk about vision. Uh, let's start with the basics. Vision, just like all other senses, are based on your perception secondary characteristic, which in turn is based on IQ. GURPS Power Ups 9 alternate attributes has alternative options, such as basing perception on dexterity, health, health plus intelligence, or making it independent. There is also an option of decoupling senses from perception, resulting in vision being an attribute of its own. Sense roles, including vision roles, are described on page 358 of GURPS basic set. A successful sense role is needed to notice something, but in some cases a follow-up IQ or skill role is required to understand what you have sensed. Unmodified vision roles are made when you are not consciously watching for anything significant and may or may not notice it in passing, or when a follow-up IQ or skill role is required. Vision roles are modified by certain advantages and disadvantages, distance and by darkness, receiving up to minus 9 pen in penalties for the latter. Unaided vision roles are completely impossible in total darkness. Also, you get a plus 10 bonus to spot something in plain sight, but not to spot hidden objects, read text, identify faces, etc. According to page 15 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses, this bonus doubles to plus 20 if you have already located a target and are focusing on it to see small details, such as reading text or seeing facial expressions. Vision-based skill roles do not take the plus 10 or plus 20 modifier. When you try to spot something deliberately hidden, this becomes a quick contest of the skill used to conceal something, that could be camouflage, holdout, stealth, etc., and your vision or another appropriate skill such as observation or search. The section also talks about the curvature of a planet blocking vision beyond the horizon, on Earth, the horizon for a person 5 to 6 feet in height equals about 3 miles. The exact formula to calculate the horizon for any person of any height on any planet can be found easily by googling it. GURPS Powers Enhanced Stances, which is one of my favorite GURPS books, introduces a detailed sensory classification based on range, arc, activity, and the amount of sensory information granted. The same book provides a way to apply various limitations or enhancements to normal vision, pricing them as one-fifth the percentage value of the modifier. In terms of range, vision is an intermediate range sense that takes the standard range penalties defined in the size and speed range table. Thus, short-range vision that takes minus one per yard in penalties is a disadvantage that costs only minus two points, and the long range vision that takes the long distance modifiers is an advantage that costs 10 points. Long range vision 2 that takes no range penalties at all costs 20 points. I would be very careful with these, allowing such abilities only with additional limitations as not to make them invalidate acute vision or bedside traits. Arc of vision is important, as it determines what area you can observe, what hexes you can attack, and how well you can defend from attacks from side or back hexes. By default, you can only make melee attacks against an enemy in one of your front hexes, unless making a wild swing. Defenses from attacks from the side hexes are at minus 2, and attacks from behind cannot be defended against. Ranged attacks can be directed at anything within the arc of vision. Also, by default, your eyes can be attacked only from the front or the sides, but certain traits may change that as well. Normal vision operates in a 120 degree wedge to the front and allows peripheral vision 30 degrees to each side for a total of 180 degrees. The same applies to vertical arcs. Standard peripheral vision adds 30 degrees in every direction. 
This improves your observational arc and arc of possible ranged attacks. You can also make melee attacks into side hexes, but one-handed attacks to the opposite sides are still considered a wild swing. You can defend against uh, side attacks at no penalty and can even defend against attacks from behind at minus 2. Also, you get plus 3 to vision rolls to detect shadowing attempts and ambushes. One of the possible limitations is easy to hit, making your eyes easier to hit and allowing attacks against them from your arc of vision, not just uh, side and front hexes. Realistic peripheral vision usually is achieved by moving the eyes to the side. This should not affect the vertical arc, and it can be represented by the no increase in vertical arc minus 10 limitation that is introduced on page 16 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses. It should also reduce the central overlap from 120 to 60 degrees. If you defend against attacks from outside the 60 degree wedge at minus 2, then this is a nuisance effect worth minus 5%. If you have two tiers of ice for a full vertical arc, uh, then you have the normal side-to-side -side arc of vision, but vertical arc of uh, 180 degrees. This is a limitation on peripheral vision, vertical only, minus 50%. Furthermore, GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses mentions extreme peripheral vision on page 16. This one is represented by putting your eyes on the sides of the head, like a rabbit, and covers 300 degrees, costing 20 points. There is no overlap, functionally also imposing temporary disadvantage, no depth perception, minus 15% on the advantage. Additionally, no increase in vertical arc, minus 10% is necessary as well. If you apply both of these limitations, you arrive at 15 points, just as per normal peripheral vision. 360 degree vision turns your arc of vision into a sphere. You can defend at no penalty against attacks from the sides or rear. You can attack force to your sides or rear without making a wild swing, but are at minus 2 to hit due to the clumsy angle. This is actually a bit weird, because uh, by rules as written, you would take a minus 2 to attack to your right hand side hex with uh, a weapon in your right hand, but you wouldn't have this penalty with peripheral vision. However, it is clarified on page 389 that this uh, minus 2 applies only to attacks to the rear and one-handed attacks to the opposite side. Also, you get plus 5 to spot shadowing attempts. Just like peripheral vision, you can take easy to hit to make your eyes more vulnerable to attacks. By default, you have additional eyes and or can turn your head 360 degrees. GURPS Powers introduces two new enhancements. Panoptic 1 plus 20% lets you eliminate the need for extra eyes or turn your head. Basically, this is no signature plus 20%. Panoptic 2 plus 60% lets you see even if blinded or blindfolded, but you still need light unless you have advantages that eliminate the need for light. The book also suggests switchable plus 10% to be able to grow additional lights. GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses says that the realistic 360 degree vision requires at least one eye on the back of your head. In that case, it has a limited vertical arc and cannot overlap with the two frontal eyes, giving it the limitations for no depth perception when looking backward, a nuisance effect worth minus 5%. If you have two eyes on the back of your head, then this problem is avoided. Even if you have uh, peripheral vision or 360 degree vision, you get an extra minus 2 to parry an attack from behind, and you cannot block them at all, unless your weapon or shield arms are extra flexible, or you have the double jointed advantage. Uh, whether the movement point costs for moving sideways or backward are affected by expanded arcs of vision is not stated anywhere. 
your arc of vision can also be restricted by these advantages. No peripheral vision removes 30 degrees from each side, turning your arc of vision into a 120 degree wedge. I assume that it does the same thing vertically, but it's not said anywhere. Your left and right hexes become back hexes. Tunnel vision turns your arc of vision into a 60 degree wedge in the front. Now you have only one front hex, two side hexes and three back hexes. Next classification category is passive slash active. Obviously, vision is a passive sense as it does not emit any signal, but constantly receives light. Finally, in the sensory hierarchy, that is uh, presented on pages 6 and 7 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses, vision is a precise sense. That means that a successful vision roll makes you aware of the presence of the target, direction, distance, and details of uh, sub-millimeter resolution and that you can aim a ranged attack using vision. You can also apply some new modifiers to vision, such as profiling plus 50% or targeting plus 20%. The first one will create a mental database, making a visual recognition easier, and the second one will make your aim better. Now let's go over all the disadvantages related to vision, aside from no peripheral vision and tunnel vision that were covered before. First, we have bad sight. In the GURPS basic set, there's only two forms, nearsighted and farsighted. Nearsighted makes it impossible to read anything more than 10 yards away and imposes a minus 6 penalty to vision rolls to spot items more than a yard away. Melee attacks are at minus 2, and when making ranged attacks, you have to double the distance to the target when determining range penalties. Farsighted makes you able to read text thrice slower and with great difficulty. You are at minus 6 to vision to spot objects within 1 yard and at minus 3 to dexterity to any close manual tasks, including melee combat. These disadvantages are quite crippling, but at TL5 or higher you must take them with a mitigator limitation, because you can buy glasses. If cheap and easy sight treatment is widely available, then this disadvantage should be downgraded to a quirk, as per page 11 of GURPS Power-Up 6 quirks. GURPS Power's Enhanced Senses allows you to take both forms as an alternative disadvantage to represent your eyesight changing over the years. Also, it introduces two new forms. Low resolution gives minus 4 to spot objects at any range and minus 8 to resolve fine details. If it represents astigmatism, you can take mitigator. No fovea usually is the result of being struck with a blinding laser. You can navigate using peripheral vision, but you defend at minus 2 and all your attacks count as wild swings. It says all attacks. I assume that it means that your range attacks are treated as shooting blindly. You cannot read and uh, must work by touch when performing fine manipulations. Also, you are at minus 3 to dexterity for close combat and larger mechanical tasks. Pizzard also introduces a new variant, motion sensitive, that is intended for realistic animals. After that we have blindness. What I find interesting here is that it works differently when purchased during character generation and when imposed via an affliction. In the latter case, you fight as if in total darkness, at minus 10. In the former case, you are more adjusted to blindness and are only at minus 6 to all combat skills and cannot target specific hit locations. When using ranged weapons, you can attack randomly or by using hearing. Obviously, it also forbids you to purchase vision-related advantages and makes you immune to vision-based attacks. GURPS Underground Adventures provides rules for navigating caves blind and the cane travel technique on page 10. Color blindness represents total color blindness. Some people consider this 
to be a disadvantage that doesn't really limit you to that much. Uh, but I'm of the opinion that it is always possible for the GM to come up with situations that make color blindness relevant. Night blindness doubles your darkness penalties. So when darkness level is minus 5, you are completely blind. By default, this is incompatible with night vision, but Pizzard has a house rule on his website where a night vision cancels the normal darkness penalties, but not the additional ones. No depth perception is identical to one eye in mechanical effects. You get minus one to dexterity for any tasks that require hand-eye coordination, including combat, and unaimed uh, ranged attacks take minus three. Also, you get minus three to operate fast-moving vehicles or mounts. Noisy gives others a bonus to hearing rolls to detect you, but I see no reason why a vision-based variant would be inappropriate. Uh, there's also some vision-related quirks from uh, GURPS Power-Up 6 quirks. Cosmetic eyeglasses, obvious, limited color blindness, this one is appropriate for realistic animals according to GURPS Animalia, photosensitivity and poor night vision. And now let's go over vision-related advantages, except for the ones that affect arc of vision, they were covered before, and the ones that shift your vision to another spectrum, they deserve a special, more in-depth look later. First, we have acute vision, that simply gives you a bonus to vision rolls. Then we have affliction and innate attack. Why are they vision-related? Because you can make them be. First, you can have an attack be aimed with the innate attack gaze. That means that you cannot use it when blinded and you must face your target. But what does facing here mean exactly? Does it mean that uh, the target must be in your front hexes or just in your arc of vision? I believe that it's the latter, since it seems to work well with established ranged attack rules. Also, if you have a 360 degree vision with Panoptic 1 or Panoptic 2, does that mean that you should be able to use innate attack gaze even at your back hexes? I don't think that's the case. But without these limitations, you would be able to do that. Uh, you can also make a vision based attack. For normal affliction, this is a plus uh, 150 enhancement, meaning that it ignores DR if the subject is using the aforementioned sense. Thus, a vision-based affliction that imposes blindness would blind anyone who is not blind, blindfolded, is not turned away, or has his eyes closed. For maledictions, this is a minus 20% limitation, because maledictions already ignore DR. Maledictions can also take vision-based reversed minus 20%. To be able to affect the subject only if the user is using the unaided vision to target. A malediction can also take both vision based and vision based reversed to combine the requirements. Uh, did you know that malediction and cone have a special interaction? It is shown on page uh, 195 of GURPS Bainstorm in the Medusa's petrifying gaze ability. That one has a vision based as well, and has rules for fighting by looking at the reflection of the target. Also there's a special enhancement, increased range line of sight on page 15 of GURPS Power Ups 4 enhancements. Uh, this one increases your range to the line of sight. Low or no signature can make attacks uh, less visible or completely invisible. You may also use uh, the more granular variant from GURPS Power-Ups 4 enhancements. Chameleon makes the user harder to spot. This one can be extended to other spectra or senses and has some new modifiers in GURPS powers. Clear sentence can displace your range senses, including sight, or just the sight with a clairvoyance minus 10% limitation. GURPS Powers provides uh, extended rules, including rules for performing actions when having multiple different viewpoints. 
Damage resistance does not protect the eyes, unless uh, with a force field plus 20% enhancement. I also like to allow the includes eyes plus 10% enhancement, but it's not in the box. Dark vision allows you to see in total darkness, but there's no color. Color vision plus 20% eliminates the latter. Girl's Powers Enhanced Senses also has a new modifier, Hypersensory, that makes it depend on the combination of all other senses, which is pretty cool as it allows you to see through most kinds of invisibility. Detect allows you to build a vision-like ability. That would be something similar to detect light with precise and reflexive. Elastic Skin improves disguise, which in turn is opposed by vision. Enhanced time sense significantly improves the rate at which you can process visual information. Enhanced tracking makes your eyes independent, allowing you to aim at multiple targets at once. Extra head gives you an additional head with additional eyes, if they were on your head originally, of course. If you have heads facing opposite of each other, then you should also buy 300 60 degrees vision. Injury tolerance, no eyes, makes you immune to blinded attacks and to eye attacks. You still are able to see somehow. Invisibility makes you invisible. This is an expensive ability, but also a very powerful one. Unlike many other vision-related abilities, this one covers uh, the entire electromagnetic spectrum by default, not just visible light. We'll come back to this ability at least twice later in this episode. I have to mention that uh, Dispels after an attack limitation, just like in D&D, is priced at uh, minus 20%. Microscopic vision allows you to discern microscopic details. One level is enough to just barely make out single cells as tiny dots. Three levels is enough to see organelles within cells and structural features on integrated chips made before 2008. Five levels is enough to see viruses. Six levels is enough to study the atomic structure. Nictitating membrane provides DR to the eyes and a bonus to health rolls concerned with eye damage. But did you know that this isn't it yet? According to GURPS Fatum 5 from Pyramid 326, even clear water imposes a minus 2 to vision rolls. GURPS Martial Arts Earth Fighting Styles says on page 22 that nictitating membrane 1 makes that penalty minus 1, while nictitating membrane 2 eliminates it, but not the additional penalties for murkiness. Uh, night vision neutralizes uh, up to minus 9 in darkness penalties. This can cause some weird interactions. For example, in an environment uh, with a darkness penalty of minus 5, a character with perception 15 would be able to see as well as a character with perception 10 and night vision 5. However, the former would fight at minus 5 but the latter will not have any darkness penalties in combat. I don't know how to handle this. Night vision can also be a feature that sets the native illumination level. Thus, a creature with night vision 4 taken as a feature will be at minus 4 in normal illumination and at minus 1 in darkness that usually imposes a minus 5 penalty. This was introduced in GURPS Fantasy. Obscure can be used to obscure vision. It only affects normal vision by default, with the possibilities to extend the spectrum with enhancements. Without stealthy, plus 100%, the borders of the effect will be much easier to detect. Also, Pyramid 399 has additional modifiers to make obscure only affect combat rolls, or make them provide a bonus to vision rolls. I assume that this can be used to negate existing darkness. Penetrating vision lets you see through barriers. Neat. Protected vision gives you plus 5 to resist attacks that disable your vision. See invisible lets you pierce invisibility. 
This advantage must be bought separately for each kind of invisibility, be it an ability type, for example, etherealness or hyperspace, or a power source, for example, magic. The true sight plus 50% enhancement introduced in Geroff's powers extends it uh, to other deceptions, such as camouflage, disguise, and illusions. Uh, would obscure 10 count as an invisibility or an invisibility-related deception for the purpose of this? I think the former fits better. Telescopic vision lets you ignore minus 1 per level in range penalties to vision rolls, doubled if you take an aim maneuver to zoom in. It can also act as a telescopic sight, increasing accuracy of your aimed ranged attacks. This can be combined with a custom-made scope at double cost, but not a normal scope. GURPS powers also has illusion that can fool visual senses. By default, it only fools normal vision, but additional modifiers can extend the spectrum. There's also some perks that can be found in GURPS power-ups too. Perks: illumination, limited camouflage, long fingers, thumbs, periscope. Robust vision. Illumination is also described on page 26 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses. The same page adds two more vision-related perks – polarization detection and tetrachromatism. We, humans, see in the visible light spectrum, while even some animals can see partially in the infrared or ultraviolet spectra. In games with supernatural elements or high or ultra-tech advancements, the rest of the electromagnetic spectrum becomes accessible. You probably know that in D&D many creatures have dark vision that uh, in its uh, third edition form functions like the dark vision advantage in GURPS. But prior to that it was stated that uh, it works in the infrared spectrum. A few months ago I found an extremely interesting article in Dragon Magazine 211. The article is called Sight in the Darkness, and it details how infravision works and all the implications of relying on infravision underground or on the surface. I found that article to be immensely useful in GURPS as well. But uh, there's three kinds of infravision in GURPS, and that makes things more complicated. Infravision can be an advantage, allowing you to switch between normal vision or infravision or just a feature, in which case you can only see in the infrared spectrum. First of all, this allows you to fight in complete darkness, but only against enemies that emit heat. This includes all living beings and most machines. Undead creatures and creatures with supernatural features no body heat will probably be in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. According to GURPS Underground Adventures, most underground environments are in thermal equilibrium, so seeing most inanimate objects is at minus 2 because of low contrast. And I assume that undead beings fit right in, you'll be able to fight them at minus 2. Also, aren't cold blooded beings always, more or less at least, at the ambient temperature, they should not stand out and be at minus 2 to detect and fight too. Human beings and other heat sources often stand out, plus 10 to vision rolls to detect them. In more normal conditions, such as outdoors during the day, this bonus is only plus 2. Infravision also gives you plus 3 to tracking, if uh, the trail is no more than an hour old. Also, infravision has low resolution, roll at minus 4 to distinguish details such as faces or text read via reflected light. Sudden bursts of heat, such as explosions or infrared lasers, may blind you, and you cannot see color. Infrared light is reflected by most objects, so it can be used to navigate and detect everything. Realistically, you would need very large eyes and a way to insulate them from your own body heat to use infravision. But this is not a concern. Above ground, objects such as large rocks usually are hotter than grass or leaves, that lose their heat due to the wind. So rocks will be brighter to infravision and will retain some of the glow at night. As the night falls, a character with infravision 
will be able to see normally as the terrain will radiate heat. As was mentioned, rocks will be brighter than trees and ground. While water is usually colder than the rest of the environment, it also loses heat more slowly, making it glow in the dark. Air is assumed to be invisible, unless very hot. Worn and wielded objects in contact with living beings will radiate some heat, and footprints, physical heats, and other friction-related phenomena will leave heat marks. This is probably what gives you plus 3 to tracking. Fires emit a lot of heat, making it possible, for example, to see a living being in front of a bonfire. I can imagine that there would be situations where you would need to know how far this blinding halo extends. I think it would be fair to invert the combat and vision penalties for heat-based uh, light sources within their radius of illumination and half the inverted values rounding down for a radius three times larger than primary illumination radius. For example, a torch illuminates a two-yard radius, dropping the darkness penalties to minus three. Uh, for an infravision using character, this would be minus seven within a two-yard radius and minus three within six yards. I am not sure how to treat blinded effects of a fire-based attack or an infrared laser, but I suggest the following. Make a health roll at minus 1 per full die of burning damage and a plus 1 per yard of distance to the attack, and I mean any point along its path. If you fail, you get a penalty to infravision-based tasks, including combat, equal to a margin of failure for margin of failure seconds. If you fail by 5 or more, or fail critically, you are blinded for margin of failure seconds instead. You should also remember that infravision can detect the lack of heat. Thus, ice, snow, white dragons and other cold producing creatures would look very dark. Also, apparently glass is impenetrable to infrared light, appearing like a mirror to those with infravision. That's interesting. So, when I convert D&D races and creatures, I usually represent dark vision with infravision, and if the creature has a light sensitivity or light blindness, night vision 5 or more as a feature. I often thought that this light sensitivity does not really impair them enough, that infravision is a very good advantage to negate the darkness penalties, but after reading that article I realized that it seems fair. For example, a draw would be able to live in the underdark mainly relying on infravision. However, he would need to take extra time and risk when interacting with others, because it is very difficult to distinguish not only one draw for another, but uh, a draw from, for example, an orc. I can imagine them using normal dim lights in places of social gatherings and libraries. Uh, what about fighting an invader from a surface who is wielding a torch? They would be able to barely see and fight them off using an infravision, but they would still be penalized if they decide to switch to normal vision. Same thing for above-ground raids. There's some ways to foil infravision that would no doubt be known to surface dwellers, because infravision is a very common trait in D&D worlds. And you will not uh, even be able to look up, because the sun is absolutely blinding to infravision. I guess that's a white costs only 10 points compared to dark vision that costs 25 points. Speaking of foiling infravision, first, you can mask yourself uh, with a heat source. Sure, you'll, you will stand out very obviously, but seeing any details will be almost impossible. Second, character with stealth might want to hide or sneak behind or in front of heat sources, such as fires, fresh piles of bodies, hot rocks, and avoid cool spots. Third, one can just hide under a thick blanket as not to stand out against the background. But this is a temporary measure, as it will get warm in, let's say, 5 minutes. A gelatinous cube might look like a black wall. Glass spells can create impenetrable barriers, and fire spells cause blindness or mask heat signatures. Covering yourself in mud or clay that probably takes at least a minute, 
should also prevent you from standing out to creatures with infravision. Spells such as Cool, Warmth, Frost, Snow can all affect infravision. Get creative! If you'd like to get tricky, you may adapt the rules for light adaptation from GURPS Tactical Shooting when switching between infravision and normal vision. Near infrared vision, introduced on page 8 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses, works with frequencies close to the visible ones, improving resolution. There is no penalty to see facial features or print. However, living creatures do not radiate in this band and can only be seen by reflected heat uh, from the sun, very hot objects or technological sources, such as active IR. Fire at 350 degrees Fahrenheit emit uh, a dull glow or a bright one at 1350 degrees Fahrenheit. When you have such sources, you gain the same benefits as for ultra vision, basically plus 2 to vision. You can also ignore up to two levels of obscure vision or equivalent penalties from natural condition, such as murky water. You are blinded total darkness. Some fish have this trait. Thermal infrared vision, that is also introduced on page 8 of GURPS Powers Enhanced Senses, doesn't actually require eyes, as it uses specialized organs. It works with uh, longer wavelengths, including those emitted by living creatures. Resolution is too poor to read by reflected infrared. You detect warm-blooded creatures or objects hotter or colder than the background, at minus 2 to your sense, not vision roll, per yard of range. You can see color and have only a vague sense of shape, but you fight at no penalty even in total darkness against a target you can detect. You gain plus 2 to vision to spot any such target, and plus 3 to tracking for a trail no more than an hour old, but you are at minus 4 to vision to distinguish similar objects. This is a trait that can only be found in some cold-blooded animals such as snakes and some bats. Ultra vision allows you to see ultraviolet light that is emitted by the sun, penetrating even the clouds and fluorescent lamps. However, it is blocked by any physical barrier and glass. It allows you to see finer details, such as scratches and contaminants, giving you plus 2 to all vision rolls when UV light is present, and a plus 2 to forensics, search and observation to spot clues or hidden objects. Also, at night you get some extra UV light from the stars, lowering the darkness penalties by 2. Also, UV light penetrates water better, halving all vision penalties underwater. You still are blind in total darkness. Wait a second, it doesn't work like that in real life. Uh, I'll link Pizzard's justification for discontinuing this advantage. And he knows this stuff uh, when it comes to light. Uh, just like infravision, you can pick ultravision as a 10-point advantage or as a 0-point feature, in which case you can only see in the UV spectrum, being blind indoors and uh, underground. However, unlike infravision, you don't have to switch between UV and invisible light. You see both at once. If you can only see in UV light, soil, grass and water will appear dark to you, but dry sand will be bright and snow might be blindingly bright. Hyperspectral vision combines infravision, ultravision and normal vision with some additional synergistic benefits. Uh, you suffer no vision or combat penalties if there is any light at all, basically you have night vision 9. In total darkness, hyperspectral vision works exactly like infravision, it also grants plus 3 to all vision rolls and uh, rolls to find hidden clues or objects, and to tracking as well. There is no time limit mentioned, no sure if that's intended. The extended low band plus 30% enhancement lets you also see but not understand microwave, radar and radio waves. This gives an increase of 8 points. Keep in mind that radio waves can be generated by lightning and astronomical objects, such as stars, nebulae and galaxies, 
and can penetrate wood, brick and concrete easily. The extended high band plus 30% enhancement lets you also see X-rays and gamma rays. X-rays can be reflected by gold and iridium, although only at an angle of 2.4 degrees or less. So you might be able to see something other than the active source of these rays. Gamma rays cannot be reflected at all. Some advantages that obscure vision, chameleon, invisibility, obscure and illusion affect different parts of the spectrum. For example, chameleon by default conceals the user from normal vision. Obscure affects one kind of vision, normal, infravision, ultravision, etc. Invisibility affects the entire electromagnetic spectrum, including radar and dark vision. And illusion creates illusions that only fool normal vision. Their capabilities can be extended, but differently. Chameleon and Obscure can take extended plus 20% for each additional related sense – normal vision, infravision, ultravision, dark vision. Invisibility seems to imply that radar is uh, related to vision. So it should be included there too, so you will not have to take a separate Obscure Raider ability. Illusion, however, works differently. Its extended enhancement costs plus 1% per point of a new vision-related advantage. Thus, illusion that affects both infravision and normal vision will have extended plus 10%. Also, it says that Raider is a different, unrelated sense, so it will cost plus 20%. This seems to contradict what Invisibility said earlier. Then, if we take a look at the Fog Cloud ability on page 140 of GURPS powers, we will see Extended LADAR plus 20% on Obscure Vision. That seems to imply that LADAR is on the list of vision times too. Finally, where does hyperspectral vision fit into all this? Do you have to take it separately for the purpose of extended, or does extended infravision and ultravision cover it as well? But if it does not, what about hyperspectral vision with extended low or high band? Do you have to conceal your gamma ray emission separately? These questions have no official answers, I think. But let's take a look at uh, the broad spectrum technique for hologram on page 36 of GURPS psionic powers. This one allows the hologram to affect ultravision, infravision and hyperspectral vision and it imposes a minus 6 penalty. Since this ability is based on illusion, there's four ways that this could have gone. First. Ultravision plus 10%, Infravision plus 10%, Later plus 20%, Hyperspectral Vision plus 25%. This results in 65% of enhancements. This should have been a minus 7 technique then. 2. Ultravision plus 10%, Infravision plus 10%, Later plus 20%, Hyperspectral Vision plus 5% because the difference between the point costs of hyperspectral vision and both infravision and ultravision is 5 points. This results in 45% of enhancements. Uh, this should have been a minus 5 technique then. 3. The technique says nothing about extended low band and extended high band, so let's assume that they are affected as well. Ultravision plus 10%, infravision 10%, later 20%. Hyperspectral vision with extended low band and extended high band plus 40%. This results in 80% of enhancements. This should have been a minus 8 technique then. And 4. Again, ultravision 10%, infravision 10%, later 20%, and hyperspectral vision with extended low band and extended high band at plus 20% because 40 points minus 20 points equals 20 points, which results in 60% of enhancements. And this results in a minus 6 technique. This seems consistent, so I assume that you have to treat hyperspectral vision as a difference between its cost and its combined infravision and ultravision costs, at least for the illusion advantage. But now let's take a look at the broad spectrum technique for photorefraction on the same page. 
Photorefraction by default affects normal vision and infravision and is based on obscure vision. Broad spectrum is a minus 4 technique that adds three senses – hyperspectral vision, lidar, and ultravision. That should have been a minus 6 technique then, unless hyperspectral vision is ignored for obscure and chameleon, if both infravision and ultravision are affected. It's still not clear whether invisibility includes LADER among its senses by default, I think it should, and whether T-ray vision is blocked by the same advantages that block normal radar, including invisibility. And now let's talk about vision and other vision-related activities. First, let's talk about eye damage. Eyes can be targeted with impaling, piercing and tight beam burning attacks from the front or side at minus 9, unless you're an octopus or a fish, in which case the penalty is minus 8. An eye hit may result from a critical hit against the face or skull. Eyes have a crippling threshold of 1 tenth HP. A crippled eye, if there are two eyes, gives the one eye disadvantage, and if all eyes are crippled, this becomes blindness. Having more than two eyes is a zero-point feature. Major wounds to the eye impose a minus 10 to knockdown rolls. Corrosion attacks that target the face have a chance to blind the subject. Also, did you know that eye crippling works from penetrating damage instead of injury? Sean Punch explains it in one of the forum posts. Now I wonder how it interacts with eyes on stalks that result from uh, 360 degree vision or peripheral vision taken with the easy to hit limitation. Those should not get the quadruple injury multiplier and minus 10 to knock down rolls for brain damage, right? Gerbs martial arts also introduced some additional rules regarding eye hits. Bleeding rolls from eye injury are made every 30 seconds instead of every minute, and major skull wound may result in impaired sight or even blindness. There's also several techniques that target the eyes. Vision can work a bit differently in different environments. GURPS Fathom 5 from Pyramid 326 says that even crystal clear water imposes a minus 2 penalty to vision rolls, plus additional penalties for murkiness. You may even stir up the silty bottom to make it uh, minus 10. Judging the distance imposes an additional minus 2. Gerard's basic set also says that vision is at minus 1 in a thin atmosphere and minus 2 in a very thin atmosphere. Eyes can also be damaged due to explosive decompression in vacuum. Uh, GURPS often mentions darkness penalties that depend on the illumination levels and lists the sample conditions for different illumination levels in many sources with various degrees of consistency. The first one is, of course, uh, in GURPS basic set on page 394. Quite in unintuitively, this is uh, where you also have rules for using torches as weapons. Penalties are also described on page 18 of GURPS tactical shooting. And this section also has rules on light adaptation and dazzling others with flashlights in the dark. There is another table on page 13 of GURPS powers and hand senses that not only has more examples, but also has illumination values and lux. And additional rules regarding being dazzled by bright light and the light source making you stand out in the dark and preventing you from seeing anything outside of the light radius. These rules are also present in GURPS Dungeon Fantasy 2 Dungeons and GURPS Underground Adventures. Finally, there is a table that is similar but not identical to the previous one on page 17 of GURPS Template Toolkit 2 Races, plus uh, more granular rules regarding dazzling. So, depending on which books you use, your torch can eliminate darkness penalties completely, drop them to minus 3 or to minus 2. Since uh, GURPS Template Toolkit 2 Races is the most recent publication, I assume that it's the version that you should use. What does darkness affect? It affects all vision-based tasks, including combat. It does not seem that it affects dodge by rules as written. 
But Sean Punch says in, in one of his forum posts that since darkness affects all dexterity-based tasks with a visual component, it should also affect parry, block, and dodge. I actually did not know that before recording this episode, and I always used full dodge, even in darkness. Finally, page 394 of GURPS basic set has a visibility section that describes various situations that can occur in combat with invisible enemies. If the attacker cannot see anything at all, he may use hearing minus 2 or some other sense to find the enemy. Otherwise, he can attack blindly in a chosen direction. If the attacker cannot see his foe, but can see his other surroundings, such as when fighting an invisible enemy, the rules are the same, but the penalty is only minus 6, not minus 10. If the attacker cannot see his foe, but knows his location for sure, for example, when the foe is in a single smoke-filled hex, the penalty is decreased to minus 4 and no hearing roll is required. If the defender cannot see his attacker, including his weapon, then he may dodge at minus 4 if he is aware of that he is being attacked. If he succeeds on a hearing minus 2 roll, then he may parry or block at minus 4. If he is unaware of the attack, he gets no defense. If the foe is in the aforementioned smoke field hex, but the defender is outside, he can defend normally, because he can see the weapon coming. But what about the situation where the foe is visible, but his weapon is not? There is no clear answer. Well, there is the stealthy attack Im imbuement skill. It does not really say much, aside from giving it the penalty to perception to notice the attack. However, the transparent blade technique on page 19 of Pyramid 369 that makes a sword invisible says that noticing the blade requires perception minus 6 modified by range. Failure to detect the weapon means that the first attack cannot be defended against, but thereafter it can be defended against at minus 4. Now let's go over the skills that are related to vision. Blind fighting is a cinematic skill that allows you to fight blindly or fight invisible foes more effectively. Body language is based on vision, so it takes all vision-related penalties. Camouflage allows you to hide from others and is opposed by vision. Disguise is opposed by perception or by criminology or observation, the latter of which is based on vision. Innate attack gaze was discussed in Affliction and Innate attack above. Invisibility art is opposed by vision and does not state whether it only fools normal vision or works like invisibility fooling the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Observation, obviously, is based on vision and is used to oppose some other skills. Search is not based on vision, but it does get a bonus from ultra vision and hyperspectral vision. Shadowing is opposed by vision. Sleight of hand is opposed by vision. Stealth may be opposed by vision or observation. Stealth may work uh, a bit tough, but there are alternative stealth systems created by fans. For example, I will uh, link one of one that I like the most. Tracking gets a bonus from acute vision, infravision, and hyperspectral vision. And traps benefits from acute vision, but only when used to detect traps. And that's all for this episode. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.